So here is this week's offshore fishing report, Northeast Offshore Report, brought to you by Sirius XM Marine. A little bit of a slower week in terms of guys getting out and actually doing some offshore fishing. But when the boats did get out, they found tuna in all kind of the same places where they've been. Things haven't shaken up too much over the last uh, couple weeks. But we're going to dig into that in a second. No Anthony DiCicci this week. He actually took today off. He is trying to break what is on the cusp of being a month-long slump of not catching any fish, tuna or otherwise. Uh, I know he's chasing Albies today. That was kind of the main hard tale, like tuna pelagic news this week, was a lot of people getting out, finding Albies. And it was one of those weeks where if you got out on a calm day with beautiful weather, you didn't do that well. And if you were one of the boats that could get out in that rough weather, southwest wind, nasty swell, uh, I heard some pretty impressive counts of people catching 10, 20, even uh, one one boat said they came back after catching 30 Albies for two guys. So that's pretty good. But we're here to talk about the bigger tuna a little bit further offshore. So that New Jersey bluefin tuna on squid bite in close on the lumps is continuing. Uh, it was still going on this week. That's been happening for the better part of the summer, and it's continuing on into September. Now, the one of the changes this week was that fishermen reported the squid being a little scattered, a little spread out. So they were spending some extra time getting the squid before then taking taking them out to the uh, to the tuna lumps and jigging them. If you are going to do that, one of the key factors to getting bit has been stealth. So you have a lot of boats in this area. They've been hitting these tuna for a while. They've seen a lot of rigs. Some of them may have even been stuck and broken off or caught and released. Uh, guys are fishing long, long fluorocarbon leaders. So I'm talking 20, 25 foot long leaders down to a hook. They're minimizing the hardware, no swivel, small hook right in the squid, keeping the weight high above it. And then a balloon or something to keep it right at the depth where you want to be fishing it. So that level of stealth has been important to getting the bites as these fish continue to see this pressure, which they've seen for you know a month and a half at this point. But as long as the bait stays around, these tuna should hang in close. And the fish that were caught over the past week, I saw between 47 and I think 60, 66 or high 60 inch fish uh, caught and weighed in off New Jersey this week for that inshore bluefin bite. Now, the yellowfin bite midshore kind of got a little bit pickier when the boats could get out there. Now, it wasn't an easy run for the boats, but when they did, they found the yellowfin pickier on those midshore grounds where they had been, pushing a little bit further, sometimes even out to the canyons, seemed to be the key to catching those yellowfin. And the boats that did fight through the slop, get out to the canyons this week, were able to catch yellowfin on the jig and, uh, and some on the troll as well. Moving on up past Long Island to New England, that south of the vineyard, east of Block Island, tuna bite is still going on. Those fish moved around a little bit, but you still have yellowfin. If you can find the hotter water, bluefin are holding in some of the uh, the cooler water, but those fish are both there. They're catching them on the troll and they're catching them on the jig primarily. I haven't heard as much about topwater fishing this week, but there was a good popper bite last week where the boats who got out and in last week's kind of brief weather window found the fish willing to hit poppers. The mahi fishing continues to be lights out. Find some floating structure out there. There's tons of chicken mahi all over the floating lobster pots. And if you find something that's been floating out there for a little bit longer, might find some bigger mahi. That's not going to slow down until that water temperature starts to drop. But so always have your mahi consolation prize gear ready to go. Before all this uh, nasty weather started, you were hearing about some white marlin drifting north of the canyons on the flats to some relatively close spots south of the vineyard. Guys going out there who were who armed with live bait. Uh, I heard a couple instances where people actually had some live bait, were able to pitch that at the white marlin and had some had some hookups on spinning gear. Very cool to hear about that happening. I think one boat said they had three uh, that they hooked up. So one of the keys to that south of the vineyard bite this week seemed to be getting there early. The bite was first thing. If you could get there at first light, get on the grounds, find the life, find the fish. They were biting really well. And then later in the day, it got a little bit pickier. That's different from what we were seeing a bit earlier in the summer when there were some days where the bite didn't even develop until mid morning, late morning, and then into the afternoon. But the boats that were able to get out there this week found good fishing at first light. It's still that jig and pop bite. Now things should transition over to a chunk bite sometime this month. You get the squid draggers up there and then the tuna will key in on them eating the discards. And that's a great way to go and, you know, pull the elephant off that. If you get a chump slick, some peanut bunker or some butterfish chunks, you can pull the fish away from the draggers, have them feeding behind your boat, and you can get some really impressive visual fishing doing that. That's always a big fall thing. That'll kick off at some point this month, not only just up here south of Martha's Vineyard and in southern New England, 
all the way down to the Jersey canyons. As we get into September, the head boats are going to uh, start running canyon trips. In fact, a couple have already been out there in the last couple days of August, and they found good fishing. Now, boats from Cape Cod, the Helen H up here, all the way down to the boats out of New Jersey, like the Voyager or the Gambler, they're going to run trips where it could be a 24-hour trip up to maybe a 48-hour trip. I think some do longer ones. I think you go on the Viking and they'll do uh, three or four-day trips offshore. But if you haven't fished the canyons and you don't have a boat that's that's capable of the canyons and you don't want to pay for a private charter, this is the best way to get offshore. I love these trips. I try to do at least one offshore overnighter on a headboat every season. I've got one coming up at the end of this month. But the boats that got out already off New Jersey found a good chunk bite for yellowfin. I know one boat landed a big eye on a headboat, which that is the only big eye I've ever caught was on a headboat. And it was it was an experience because you're you're fighting a, a big, bad tuna, one of the toughest, hardest fighting tunas. Put it right up there with a the big bluefin tuna in terms of how hard they fight. And you're dealing with 25 other guys on board, an anchor line, all this other stuff. It's kind of a crazy mess. But uh, when one makes it to the boat, it is always really cool. So I know there was a 220-pounder caught on a boat out of New Jersey, the, uh, the Big Jamaica. So thanks for watching this report. I know this one was a little bit leaner and shorter on information, but as these storms roll through and the seas hopefully flatten out for us toward the end of this long weekend coming up, we should get more information out there. If you look for a weather window, Sunday looks like it might be doable. Monday's looking good. Although that's all subject to change, there are four tropical systems spinning around out there. So look for us to come back next week with more information. I'll have Anthony DeCicci back, fresh off his day off, and hopefully having caught some fish after what's been a little bit of a slump for him.